So a while back, do you remember we looked at all those different functions on the board and we said which of these are products of functions, which of these are composite functions. So we're now going to be working out how we can differentiate things using the product rule, which is where you have two functions that have been multiplied together. So the product rule, there you can do a proof of the product rule. If you're aiming for the top, top grades and you're interested in doing maths at university, you would easily be able to understand a proof for the product rule. But we're a little bit tight on time here, so I thought it would be useful just to kind of show you the product rule. You would quite easily be able to understand the proof as well. But the product rule says, if y is equal to u, v, u and v are both uh, functions of x. They're not like constants or anything. They're actually functions of x. Then dy by dx, what you do is you keep the u part of the function the same and you multiply it by the derivative of v with respect to x. So you differentiate the second one and you keep the first one the same. And then you add the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first function. So you're getting this pattern here of keeping one and differentiating the other and adding onto it the other, the other way round of differentiating the other one and uh, keeping the other one the same. So I'm just going to repeat what I've said in here. This is quite easy to remember. Differentiate one of the things but leave the other, then do it the other way round and then add them. Since addition is commutative, it doesn't matter which way round we do it. So it doesn't matter which one you differentiate and keep the same, because at the end of the day, I'm just adding them together. Commutative means I can do this one plus this one, or I could do this one plus this one. The order doesn't matter. Now, the way that I remember this, I don't really remember it using these dv dx and du dx. I remember it with like little dash notation. So I would say that the derivative of y is u v dash plus v u dash, okay? You can see there that you've got one kept keeping the same, the other one differentiated, then keeping the other one the same and then differentiating the other one that you've got there, okay? Now, do you remember when we did the chain rule, I didn't want you to write down what u was equal to. With the product rule, if you're, I said to some people in further maths, I want you to do it in your head eventually, but generally I think the product rule should be written down because it's quite a, a helpful tool to have written down. So I've put that as this tip. With the product rule, I want you to write out u equals and v equals. This is because each of u and v can be more complicated to differentiate. And I've said if you're doing further maths, you'll need to work do it towards doing it all mentally just because the amount of differentiation we do in further maths just gets quite a lot higher, quicker. So in this particular situation that we've got here, u is equal to x squared and v is equal to sine x. So I just start off by writing down the two that I've got. And I personally like to write them next door to each other. And then when I go down, I'm going to differentiate. So x squared, I'm not even going to ask anyone, differentiates to 2x. And sine x differentiates to cos x. And then for the product rule, I, can't, I guess I don't really even remember the product rule. I, I have quite a visual sort of memory. I remember that the product rule is like this kind of cross shape. So now that I've got them going down like this, product means things have been multiplied. So I'm going to have those two and I'm going to have those two. And I see this kind of multiply symbol in the middle, which reminds me of product. And that just tells me the things that are going to be multiplied and added together. So if y is x squared sine x, then dy by dx is going to be x squared times cos x. And I would write the x squared first because it's nice to finish with a trig function. And then my other one is going to be 2x multiplied by sine x. That's it. That is the product rule, OK? As you can imagine, it'll become more complicated as we put more complicated functions into the product rule. So just to quickly reiterate, first thing you identify is that the product rule is even required. There are two things being multiplied together there. It is not a chain rule. Write down u and v. Differentiate as you go down. You see this cross pattern, which reminds me of a multiplication symbol because of the product rule. And you put it back together with it being added. The more um, astute of you amongst here will recognize that you've got one of them kept the same. There's the x squared. And you differentiated the sign to get cos. You kept then the sign the same, and you differentiated the x squared to get 2x. So some of you may be able to jump straight to that, but I wouldn't recommend that, at least for this first lesson, as you're doing this, OK? 
So we're now going to have a look at doing a few more examples. I'm just going to go through these quite quickly. So can somebody tell me what u is equal to in this one? And v? e to the power of 2x. So u dash is going to be 1. And v dash, what does e to the 2x differentiate to? 2e to the 2x. So it's going to be the cross shape that we've got there. So it wants us to find the coordinates of the turning point. Obviously, that means that dy by dx is 0. zero. Good. So I'm going to say that dy by dx is equal to this one times this, this one. So that's x times 2e to the 2x. I'm going to write that as 2x e to the 2x. And then I've got this times this, which is plus e to the 2x multiplied by 1. And I want to make that whole thing equal to 0 for the turning point. So I get 2x e to the 2x plus e to the 2x. Yes, I can simplify it. How should I simplify that right-hand side? Yeah. So you factorize out the e to the 2x. So you get 2x plus 1 e to the 2x. And now that we've got it as two things being multiplied, we know that either 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, because we've got two things multiplying, which means that x is equal to minus a half, or e to the 2x is equal to 0. But can e to the 2x be equal to 0? No. So we're going to say here that there are no solutions for this one. Because if you know what the e graph looks like, it never crosses the x-axis. So we've got that x is equal to minus a half. Is that the end of the question? Why? Yeah, I kind of gave it away when I said why. So we've got to find the y-coordinate. So we now are going to say that y is equal to x e to the 2 times x, which is 2 times minus a half. So it's minus a half e to the minus 1. We don't want to use a calculator. They only want to have these exact values of things that you've got here. You could, if you really wanted to, you could say it's minus a half multiplied by e to the minus 1 is 1 over e. So you could say it's minus 1 over 2e. I don't really know which I have a preference for between this one and this one. It depends on the question. They might tell you, put it in this form or put it in this form. So the turning point is x, y, like this. And that's the turning point in this graph that we've got here. Obviously, you could find out what that was as a number, but we're just going to leave it in its exact form. If the question ever says exact form, it means e, ln, pi, all of that kind of stuff. Just give you a few more seconds to finish writing that down. OK, I'm going to go on to the next bit. So this time, we're going to do the product rule with some more complicated functions. The exercise is going to come up with quite a few more complicated functions. So this time, it's f of x instead of y. And then we're going to try and find f dash x. So quite clearly, u is x squared. And v is, what should I say that v is? Good, 3x minus 1 to the half. So this is where writing down u and v can be good, because the functions are going to be a little bit more complicated. So u dash is 2x. And v dash is going to be, I wonder if anyone could try and do the whole thing of this chain rule a little bit neater rather than doing it in one stage. What do you think this whole thing would be? 3 over 2, 3x minus 1 to the minus a half. Because we had pulled the half down, but we also multiplied it by the 3 because of the derivative of the blah that we had there. So we're going to do these ones and these ones multiplied. And we're going to say that f dash x is going to be these two. So that's 3 over 2x squared, 3x minus 1 to the minus a half, plus 2x, 3x minus 1 to the half. There's no way of simplifying There is a way of simplifying that. Yeah, there is a way of simplifying that. You could try and pull out a factor that might make things look a bit nicer. What kind of factor do you think we could take out of this? 
we could take out a 3x minus 1 to the a half. If you take out 3x minus 1 to the half, let's just see what actually happens when we do that, OK? You could also take this bit's like the harder bit of this question. This is the simplifying stage that's going to be a little bit harder. If I take out, I'm just going to take out this to begin with. I'll take out an x afterwards. I'm now going to do some big brackets to think. If I divided this by 3x minus 1 to the half, I would have what? I would have a 3 over 2x squared. I would have a 3x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. Because if you think about the powers here, you've got a half, and then you've got the minus 1. And a half minus 1 is minus a half. And then for the next bit, I'm just going to have a 2x like this. So now I could also take out an x to the front as well. So I'm going to take an x out of here and here. So that's going to be x, 3x minus 1 to the half. And then in here, I'm going to have 3 over 2x multiplied by 3x minus 1 to the minus 1 plus 2. It's not an awful lot neater, but just in case they ever want you to do anything that looks like this, I could then put this out of index form so that you would have 3 over 2x multiplied by 1 over 3x minus 1 plus 2. And you could keep going. You could then add all of these things together and try and have it all as one thing together. So it's not absolutely necessary unless they're asking you to aim for this. But just to show you that if you wanted to keep going with this, you can do. I'm probably not going to keep going with this because it's already starting to get kind of messy. But they might expect you to do some further manipulation. And we'll explore that when we're going through the exercise as well. OK? So taking these bits out as a factor, um, you're probably more familiar with that if you've done further maths because we took out strange factors in like series and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you can keep going with these things. We're nearly there. We're just going to do one more example. And then there's a practice question there for you. This time we've got y equals e to the 4x sine squared 3x. So you can see they're going to be a bit more complex now. We're going to try and show what dy by dx is equal to. That it's e to the 4x sine 3x brackets a cos 3x plus b sine 3x, where a and b are constants to be determined. But there's nothing new here. It's just applying all the stuff that we've got from before. So u is equal to e to the 4x. And v is equal to sine of 3x squared. I've just written it in that way with the squared bit on the outside of that one, OK? So u dash is what? 4e to the power of 4x. v dash is a little bit more complicated, OK? You've got blah squared, which is going to become 2 blah to the power of 1 multiplied by the derivative of blah. What is the derivative of blah here? Good. 3 cos 3x. So that gives us... 6 sine 3x cos 3x. We're going to have the same pattern of these two being multiplied and these two being multiplied. And we're going to try and keep on top of the algebra of making it nice and neat. So dy by dx is going to be that times that. Now, I like to start with the number. Then I like to put the exponential. And then I like to finish with the trig. So that's those two being multiplied. And then I'm going to do these two being multiplied. So I'm going to have plus 4e to the 4x sine 3x squared. And then we just want to go back to what the question wanted. They want it in a factorized form. And the factor that they want taken out is e to the 4x sine 3x. So they want me to take out e to the 4x sine 3x. So it's going to be e to the 4x sine 3x. What will I have left for this bit? 
6 cos 3x. And what would I have left for this next bit? There's going to be a 4 and a sine 3x. So in this particular case we've got here, a is 6 and b is 4. What do you think they might ask you to do next, which I haven't asked for us to do and we're not going to do, but what do you think they might ask you to do next in this? Because you'd never get an exam question that is just to do this thing. There's always going to be a part B, there's always going to be a part C. They might ask for a turning point, mightn't they? They might ask for a turning point, in which case we would want this thing here to equal zero. So either this is equal to zero. Is this ever equal to zero? Yes, because this thing, this thing could be equal to zero. This thing can't be zero. This thing could be zero. And you would also have to solve this equation being equal to zero. Just a quick side note, how would you solve this equation being equal to zero? What technique do you think you might use? You use the harmonic identity. You could use the harmonic identity, but because it's being equal to zero, you could do it quicker than the harmonic identity. You could divide by cos to create tan, and it could be an equation in tan x, and then you could go from there, okay? So that's the kind of, it's always good to think, what might come next in this situation? What, what topics might this be blended with? So there is an exam question that you guys can have a very, very quick go at here. So it's just to do differentiating this function with respect to x. It's obviously just a part A question. And then you're gonna try the even questions from exercise 9D. So I'm just going to do this one myself on the board really slowly, and then you can check. 